Okay, so Apple released a somewhat new product during their October event, and that was the 14 inch M3 MacBook Pro. And after spending some time thinking about it and watching that part of the event again, it doesn't really make sense, but I also think Apple did that on purpose. So let's dive in. So some background information here. Now the 13 inch MacBook Pro has pretty much remained unchanged for the better part of the last decade. I mean, even in 2020, when we transitioned from Intel to Apple Silicon, it pretty much did not change at all. Same touch bar, same chassis, same ports. Uh, you know, realistically, the only thing Apple did was just rip out the Intel guts and slap in Apple Silicon. But after watching the October event, it seems now that Apple has just completely axed that lineup and has essentially gutted the 14 inch Pro and outfitted it with a base model M3 chip. But this new hybrid 14 inch MacBook Pro slash 13 inch MacBook Pro has a big issue that a lot of people are talking about. And that is that it only comes with eight gigabytes of RAM. Now, some people are gonna disagree with what I'm about to say, but eight gigabytes of RAM is fine for people doing everyday tasks like browsing the web or answering emails, for example. Take the 13 inch MacBook Air lineup or even the Mac mini as an example. Many of those users simply do not do any intensive tasks that require more than eight gigabytes of RAM. But importantly, the price point of those devices also reflects that. Sure, Apple products are still expensive relative to competitors, but $1099 for a MacBook Air or $599 for a Mac mini, both of which I assume will get M3 chips next year, is still relatively affordable, all things considered. $1599, however, is a completely different story. And for Apple to ship a MacBook with Pro in its name, with only eight gigabytes of RAM in 2023, at that really quite premium price point, I think is kind of crazy. Now, for the unaware, here's why bumping up RAM to 16 gigabytes is super important in situations other than a basic user doing basic things. Apple Silicon uses something called unified memory. Basically, it just means that whatever RAM you have on the machine, both the CPU and GPU and any apps currently in use can access it. It's essentially shared. So if you've only got eight gigabytes of RAM, after the RAM that Mac OS and any of your apps are using, which can sometimes be three to five gigabytes, you only have about two to three gigabytes left for the CPU and GPU to fight over. And I've proven many times on this channel that if you feed Apple Silicon some more RAM, the sweet spot is 16 gigabytes by the way, you unlock a pretty significant amount of performance when doing certain tasks. Tasks that in my opinion, people mostly do on a laptop that has Pro in the name. Now people use Windows laptops to compare here, even though the architecture is actually completely different. So it's not technically an apples to apples comparison, but let's take a look anyway. So for example, this popular Windows laptop is at the same price point as the 14 inch M3. It has 16 gigabytes of system RAM, but the GPU obviously can't access that. So the GPU also has eight gigabyte of its own RAM, known as VRAM or video RAM. And this is the case for most Windows laptops around the 1600 US dollar price range. I think if you're gonna be paying that much money, you really do want at least 16 gigabytes, not only to use right now, but in the future as well for future proofing, because if you're gonna be spending this much money on a laptop, you're probably gonna keep it for at least five years or so. And there's no way of knowing how much RAM you're gonna need in five years. So yeah, I mean, it certainly does look like this 14 inch M3 Pro exists, purely so Apple could just streamline their MacBook lineup and just get rid of that 13 inch MacBook Pro once and for all, and also serve as a really juicy upsell for the more expensive M3 Pro MacBook. And it is pretty juicy. I mean, for an extra 400 bucks, which to be fair is a fair amount of money, you get an extra Thunderbolt port, three additional CPU cores, four additional GPU cores, and a whopping 10 gigabytes of additional RAM. Not to mention it supports multiple displays unlike the M3 MacBook that only supports one. Yikes. Not a bad deal in comparison to the 14 inch M3 MacBook Pro, right? Especially when you look at the astronomical prices Apple charges for the RAM upgrades alone. So the question is, should you buy it? Well, I think it's actually a really, really tough sell. Assuming Apple updates the rest of the Macs next year with M3, you've got the Mac mini that also has a fan to unlock the full performance of the M3 chip the 13 inch MacBook Air at $500 less, 
but you get most of the performance of the M3 chip or the full fat 14 inch M3 Pro. And I would seriously recommend considering any of those options instead, unless you're a really niche user who, you know, finds the 14 inch MacBook Pro really attractive and you don't need extra RAM and you really like the brighter screen and the extra ports and stuff like that. Uh, but I think that's a very, very small subsection of people, especially if you consider the premium over something like a 13 inch M3 MacBook Air at just 1099. Alternatively, just pick up a refurbished M1 Pro or M2 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro. I mean, right now there are a ton of deals out there on the Apple refurbished website, eBay, uh, Amazon has deals quite often as well. Uh, you know, there's a lot of options out there. So yeah, I don't think it's necessarily a bad MacBook. It just kind of like the 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro and M1 MacBook Pro just doesn't really make sense compared to all of the options on either side, the more budget end and the more premium end as well. But let me know what you think down below. Apart from that, thanks for watching.